Caddis Maximus here this time with another Charger review. We're almost through these. I know they're not popular, but they're tools just like anything else I review on this channel. Not really. I do review other items, shoes and things, but definitely wanted to get through these chargers. This Passport LiPo is a common or relatively common high performance remote control car, airplane, remote control hobby charger, lithium ion, and it supports both the standard lithium polymer as well as uh, lithium ferrite polymers. A lot of lithium ion chargers will charge either of those chemistries, but ones that allow you to select between standard lithium polymer and lithium ferrite polymer, which are like the really good lithium ion batteries. They're much, they have much less uh, fire hazard. Uh, they can take many more charge cycles. Lithium ferrite polymer batteries really are excellent. And so things like, you know, drones and remote control cars, all those hobbies, they kind of take batteries. This is a small, a very small one. But they just take, you know, various voltage lithium ion batteries. So when they talk about S, that's the number of cells. Now, these chargers aren't designed just to charge one single battery by itself. Although I'm not entirely sure about uh, on this particular unit, unit, if you just hook one cell up to the main in and out, uh, whether or not it'll charge it but it generally needs balanced connections. Now, I use these kind of batteries uh, actually for projects. This is a 10.8 uh, excuse me, 10.8 volt nominal lithium ion battery. It's only 1.3 amps, but it's really small and lightweight. When it charges up, it ends up charging up around uh, 12, 12 and a half volts. That's where the whole 12 volt max thing comes in with all those power tools, is the 10.8 volt power tools charge up to 12 volts nominal or 12 and a half volts, so they call them 12 volt max. Max, DeWalt, and Kita, they all do it. But how these batteries work is you have two main terminals and you have another terminal here which has all the balance connections. Balance connections mean that this 10.8 volt battery pack is actually a sandwich of three 3.7 volt battery packs put together. And so these wires just break in between each of these battery packs so the charger can interact with each pack uh, individually. And that's what a balanced charger is. And maybe one of these packs here is a little bit low. And so it will detect that during charging. And then this is actually a safe style. There's two different styles. Some very early ones, which would, and this isn't like from Dynamite brand, but just from general lithium ion balance chargers, where they'll try to bring up maybe one cell's old and it just isn't getting uh, charging up to a high enough voltage. What it'll do is they'll stop charging two cells and then try to, you know, overcharge one of them. That's a bad way. These are good. This is known as a discharge type balancer. So what it means is if it's charging and these two cells are coming up the voltage and this one's lagging, what it will do is to prevent potentially overcharging maybe a cell that got dinged or is just not performing as well is it will actually discharge the two higher voltage cells to match whatever the lagging one is. And that's really how it prevents fires. This is the same thing that's used in power tools. These power tool batteries, that's what they do. They have two uh, main, you know, their 20 volt max or 18 volt output. And then we have all these connections, C1, C2, C3, C4. Uh, those are the same thing as these little wires. And yes, you can make a, you know, take apart a DeWalt charger and make an adapter. And I could charge this DeWalt battery off of this, no problem. Because this has 10 cells in it, but they're in parallel. So we have one, two, three, four, five pairs of cells. And that's how these uh, larger battery packs charge. And of course, it has like a little ID and a temperature sensor in there, which I believe this one also does. So if you're into electronic projects, obviously, if you're into any kind of remote control, electric hobby, toys, uh, you'll be more familiar with these. But they're actually pretty nice if you're doing any kind of electronics, like something like a battery pack like this would drive, you know, many 12 volt items. You could actually use this charger to drive a car charger to charge up a cell phone or something like that. And I, it's kind of a convenient voltage being around 12 volts, uh, you know, 11 when it gets discharged or 10.5, which works fine on most 12 volt items. And so I kind of use this as a project uh, battery and this is just a great charger. I don't know if I mentioned the model number. It's the DYN4066. There's a 4065, which is an earlier one. And it seems like all first generation chargers inevitably have some type of issues. So they issued a uh, revised one. This one is pretty high power. It's a maximum, I believe, of 50 watts out. It'll do up to five amps. But that's only in a two cell configuration. Obviously, the current drops down, the more cells it has to drive and excuse me, in uh, parallel, and it's a maximum of two amps 
I mean, how it works is you have these balance charger ports. And so these are the same thing as those odd little fingers in this battery. And it's what this little thing plugs into. And so if you have uh, a two or a three cell, excuse me, if you have a two cell, it'll do up to five amps. If you have a three or a four cell, it'll do four amps. And if you have a five or a six cell, it'll only do two amps. And I think that's kind of an odd break, but it's, it's just fine. This does have a loud beeper, so it confirms when you change the modes and can start charging. And when the charging's complete, which I like, it is fan cool, and it does have a pretty loud and aggressive fan. It came with a variety of accessories, such as little banana plug adapters to, you know, connect up this, the batteries. We have, not that item, we have this, which is a power cord, so you can actually, it'll run both off of plug-in corded power, or it has this port on the side where you can use this and charge it off of a car battery. You can also get a cigarette lighter adapter. It came with some other weird little charger for something I have no idea what it is. I think for uh, remote, for the actual remote control rechargeable batteries, not the, for the vehicles, which use the big batteries, but for the actual remotes themselves, I believe that's what's uh, for the charging. So we'll just give this a quick demonstration so you can see how it works. Uh, I always thought it was kind of interesting because this charger, you know, you can find online this is an older one. They have a newer one, but they, you know, average anywhere from thirty to fifty dollars. It really depends. These types of things go on sale fairly regularly. What I think is funny is not the output. It's a pretty equivalent to a modern power tool charger, but for about the same price. I should say about the same price as like this Dewalt DCB one hundred and one charger, which is a high, pretty high performance Dewalt charger. It's funny that both those chargers are the same price, yet this one offers. Just a whole bunch of extra stuff. It's more compact. It has a metal body. It's, you know, fan cooled. I really like the aluminum body on it a lot. Comes with a lot of accessories. And then great indication, custom, customizable uh, charging current, and then actual status indicators for all the balancing of the individual cells. And so that's always been kind of amusing is that this balance charger, which is real basic and just is in a plastic case and only goes to four amps max. It will do four amps into a big five cell battery, so it does have more power than this. So that is the big difference, so maybe that justifies the cost. But uh, I would always think it was neat if a power tool company came out with a really nice charger that had all these indicators. So anyway, I'm gonna plug this in. The fan's actually pretty loud, um, but these have been pretty reliable. And if you are you know, do kind of custom stuff with lithium ion batteries and you actually want quick and easy charging, these are great. For a while, I was uh, thinking about getting into an electric scooter, and you uh, it's cheaper to buy ones with lead-acid batteries and then upgrade the batteries to lithium-ion, and I was going to use this as a charger for that. Let's plug it in and get a quick demonstration here. It's pretty loud. Let's turn off the light here so you can see this. It only has one button on it, and if it doesn't have anything connected, you press and hold. And it will change the light over here, which tells you that it's going from ferrite or standard polymer battery. And then you can press this button and it cycles through the current. I usually charge in one amp just to expend, extend battery life. But this thing's always been a little bit funky. But what I what you usually do is you just take the little balance connector and plug it into its appropriate port. It's always kind of funny because these balance connectors are like a standard electronics plug that you find inside you know home audio equipment and all that kind of stuff and then we have this little adapter here for the mains which are banana plug style interestingly enough and then we just plug this in and then press and hold You can hear the fan actually slow down as it starts driving power to the battery. Um, it makes the same sound as if it were changing the battery mode, but you know it's charging because it makes that sound, but the light doesn't change. It's a little funky interacting. I wish it, they had a separate button for mode and current, and then there's a dedicated one for actually charging, so it's a little easier to determine whether it really is going to charge or not. Once it started blinking, then we know it really is charging. This was a charged battery, but I did discharge it for a little while into a 12-volt incandescent light bulb. But since it's recently charged, it may not actually have cells that are far enough out of, out of balance to actually indicate. And that's why I was plugging this in and demonstrating. I was trying to see if we could 
get these because what will happen is as it's charging it's aware so this is a three cell battery so these there it goes so cell one is not charging quite as quickly as cell two and cell three so it just did a little discharge it did it too much so now it rebalances those and so that's how this charger works is as it's charging it's constantly just pausing for a millisecond just to check voltages and then adjusts specific voltages on each of the cell packs or individual cells that are in this pack and I think it would just be so cool if there's a power tool charger that had this too so you could you know watch it charge you could know that a battery is starting to go on its way out because you'd see it charging and there would always be like cell 2 is constantly being adjusted constantly being adjusted and you're like oh okay I know there's a problem anyway let me turn this back on I'm gonna cancel this charge all you have to do to cancel a charge is simply unplug the battery and it, you can stop the charge at any point. Sorry for the longer video here, but I uh, there's a, quite a few, well, not quite a few, but there's a few videos about these chargers, you know, on YouTube. Um, but they just didn't quite answer the types of questions that I was talking about in this video. So that's kind of what prompted it. Once again, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed to the Caddis Maximus channel, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.